Park skier Tom Wallace was recently named Skier of the Year with 30,000 votes on freeskier.com. He was also voted Powder Magazine's Skier of the Year. Not surprisingly, he's quickly become a household name in the ski world. In his specialty, ski slope style will be an Olympic sport in 2014. Exciting times for you, dude. Definitely. Must have taken you forever to vote for yourself 30,000 times. <laughs> Lots of clicking and reloading, for sure. That's awesome. So how did you break into free skiing? A uh, pretty interesting story, I guess. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so not very big mountain town, but uh, my parents were into skiing and grew up uh, with a lake house, mountain house down in Maryland on this little resort called Wisp, and I don't know, got into it. I mean, our sport with these you know, rails and jumps, you can pretty much do it on any size of hill. It doesn't have to be the biggest mountain out there. You can learn on anything, and I don't know randomly fell into it and fell in love with it. Finally moved out west to go to college at the University of Utah and from there it took off. As soon as I got onto a big hill it was like, let's do it. So just been working out ever since. And so when you're like practicing your new tricks and creating all this crazy stuff that you do, like, I mean that's just you. I mean you're inventing that. Like you don't have a coach that helps you do this. No, it's something so cool about our, our sport, you know, it's like there's no example, there's no, it's, it's so new and these tricks that, you know, me and other people are doing these days, it's like you, you just guessing. You go out there, you know, maybe try it on a trampoline or something before and then, you know, go out there and do it on snow and it's like, this may work or I, I might end up on my head, I don't know. Wow. And uh, that's, it's so cool though to, you know, have that opportunity to kind of create like that almost. <laughs> so how do you determine what will be uh, like a, a successful trick that you won't land on your head or like a good rail what are the what are the elements that need to be there uh definitely a lot of like just risk assessment i guess seeing what could go wrong and and i i like to practice a ton beforehand like i said like on the trampoline or something like that and and visualize like with our sport it's like so much if you can see it at least in your head and like kind of visualize how the rotation will work or how the rail is going to slide it's it's just so much easier so just kind of like thinking things through before you go out there and and try them, I guess. <laughs> well, we actually have some uh, clips of you, and uh, we'd love to check it out. Let's do it. Now, I look at that and I'm blown away, but I'm also concerned for your safety. Have there been times where you've actually really injured yourself? Definitely injured myself. Nothing too, too bad. I mean, never had uh, terrible injuries. Well, knock right. on yes, wood, but uh, a lot of people in our sport do things to their knees, a lot of knee injuries, but uh, I've been lucky. I had uh, a few minor things, some broken collarbones. This past year, actually, I broke my shoulder blade. Didn't know about it till like two weeks afterwards. Like mm -hmm. thought it was just like a muscle sore. I don't know, finally got an x-rayed and just some minor injuries like that, some concussions. But I mean, I've been really lucky. It's definitely a dangerous wow. sport yeah. though. <laughs> it looks like it. And what's the circuit like for you? Like, are you a professional athlete? Is this what you do full time? Or you got other things going on? Uh, pretty much. I mean, I don't have another job for sure. This is, you know, what I do to make money. But uh, not a full-time athlete, I guess. I, I ski, obviously, all winter and even during the summer and falls, but uh, I'm actually going to school still at the University of Utah. I'm like six classes away from graduating. Nice. I mean, I'm just so close. It's like, I got to finish. <laughs> right. And so it's cool, actually, going to school in the falls and kind of like thinking about something else. This is like a fairy tale life we live right now or that mm -hmm. I live right now. So going to school keeps me grounded and level-headed, I like to think. And uh, it's fun to, you know, actually learn something about the real world, I guess. 2014 Olympic sport, is that like your path? Is that you want to be on that team? Definitely, definitely the you know big motivating factor yeah. the next couple of years, but we'll see how it goes. Mine could change any day, but uh, you know, the Olympics is such a huge event, such a cool, just cool place to be. I would, you know, not, not to get a medal, not to win, just to be in that atmosphere and like see how driven all those other athletes are and be a part of that, you know, mm -hmm. the world yeah. coming together like that is really cool.
What's it mean for you and for the sport that it's now going to be in the Olympics? I think, you know, it being in the Olympics is just amazing, you know, for our sport, especially just having the opportunity to, to show the world kind of not just that we're going to be, you know, we have the opportunity to get bigger corporate sponsors and this, that, and the other thing, but having the ability to like show slope style and half pipe, both, you know, huge park aspects of our sport to like the mass audiences and convince a couple more yeah. kids out there to get into it is, is the reason, you know, I want to see it, you know, go that far. And I want to go there just to have the opportunity to be a part of that. It's the first year it's going to be in there. It's like, it's kind of like, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. And also this has taken you around the world, right? You've been doing a lot of traveling. Oh yeah. All over the place. You know, I'm diamond status, so yeah, not a big course. deal uh, going everywhere. No, it's, who's it's, dragon? <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, I've been to some of the coolest places in the world. Yeah. I mean, they do these city big airs during the fall where they build scaffolding jumps and they give us opportunity to go to I've been to Barcelona and Zurich and Stockholm, wow. all these different cities. And then, you know, cities where there's not even that much snow, we go to events. And then mountains all throughout the Alps and down in New Zealand, Canada, and all throughout the U.S. It's just, I don't know, it's crazy to have mm -hmm. that kind of an opportunity. I mean, did you ever think you'd be in this position? Traveling the world, <sighs> skiing, people coming out to watch you perform tricks? Not really. I mean, it's definitely, you know, kind of surreal still to this day. I mean, I grew up and was into it so much that, you know, at one point I was going to the summer camp paying and, and going yeah. to film premieres and getting these other pros to sign, you know, posters for me. And I still have same posters, you know, back home, That's hung so up, cool. you know, next to posters that I now have. So it's, it's crazy. You know, I never, you know, I always dreamed it. It was right. always a dream, but something, you know, that was always like a little out there, hard to mm -hmm. obtain, but it's worked out and I'm so grateful. Yeah. It's so amazing. <laughs> So what's left on that sort of bucket list of yours? Like rails bucket. that you want to accomplish or tricks that you've been thinking about that you really want to do? There's definitely some. There's some rails still and, and some stuff, you know, urban-wise and film-wise. Since I've, I travel so much for competing throughout the year, I never have as much time as I want to do like a full film segment. And one of the things I'd like to do in the future is set aside a whole year to mm. be in the backcountry and filming in downtown in the urban environment and do like you know, huge full film segment, but until then, Olympics and having a lot of fun. Those are the main long-term goals. Who was filming the stuff in the segment we just saw? Ah, uh, the stuff you just saw is uh, a good friend of mine, uh, AJ DeCoolis, and uh, some of the other guys that work with a company called 4x9 Media. It's just a crew of kids that I've gone to school with for like the last five years. They're from Vermont, so we met, you know, first year out at the university, just, just the best group of friends, like, you know, live with those guys and I've been you know skiing with them for five years now we make movies they don't they don't sell that many right. but uh, I mean if anybody wants to check it out buy a copy yeah. that would be great but uh, I mean it looked like you were like in the middle of the night there's like <laughs> lights there no one was around what was going on oh it's always I mean that's a big part of our filming is like these urban rails so we're out there full generator <laughs> and light set up like you know bright lights like we got in here just out in the streets like trying to shoot these rails and filming from whatever 1 a.m. until 7 a.m. in the morning just working so hard getting so beat up but it's fun I mean it's quiet out at night and it's like it's a cool experience I don't know where was that filmed uh, most of that stuff well there's a lot of stuff in there I guess from all over the world kind of but uh, a lot of the rails are from Salt Lake City Utah which has been my hometown or mm -hmm. current hometown for like the last five years and just learned so much and driving around in the summer trying to find those rails just to go back when there's snow on the ground to, you know, film on them. It's a different way to look at the city, you know? You could, oh, yeah. you could instead of being a tourist walking around looking <laughs> at the monuments, you are looking around and like, oh, I like that staircase. I've, I've Ooh, got a nice horrible rail. problem with it. No matter where I am, I'll be in Hawaii on vacation and I'll, oh, I, got, <laughs> oh, I can't, well, obviously I shouldn't even look at that. Like, <laughs> there's no snow here ever. It's like, right. it's this thing wrong in my brain. Like, I think... It just, I can't, you know, go anywhere without looking at that staircase or that railing and that wall. Like, how could I ski down that? It's a, mm -hmm. it's, it's a problem. Weren't you trying to figure <laughs> out if you could ski some certain rail at school or something? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, there's this rail, we just call it the down sea down rail. It's shaped, goes down, then does a complete sea and goes back down underneath where you started. Does that make sense? And it's oh, right yeah, out okay. back of our student union. So for the last four years, five years since I've been going to school there. I eat lunch there, you know, we're at the student union. Every day I look at it like, I want to slide that rail. And then finally this year, snow and conditions were right. Finally manned up and uh, and did it and got it. So, How'd it go? Yeah. You got it? 
I got it. It took a while. Yeah. Lots of hours of hiking up that same stair set. Lots of slams, bruises, oh, beat up. But, man. you know, it's all worth it for that one shot that comes out in the end. Not the hmm. sport for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been great, man. Thanks for stopping yeah, by. Thanks, we really appreciate it.